Bless the name of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we lift your name, oh God. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are the King of kings. Hallelujah. And the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. This is your time, God. Hallelujah. We owe you glory. Hallelujah. We owe you praise, God. And we thank you, hallelujah, for who you are, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We magnify your name, God. We exalt you today, God. You alone are worthy of all the glory and the honor, God. Thank you for another day, hallelujah, to give your name glory, to give your name honor, to give your name the praise that is due to you. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord God, that you are with us, Lord God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for fresh anointing falling today, Lord God. Hallelujah, as we worship, Lord God, as we praise, Lord God, as we give what's due to you, God. Thank you, Lord God, that yokes will be des destroyed, that burdens will be removed, that deliverance will take place. Hallelujah, in this place today. Hallelujah, be glorified. Hallelujah, be glorified, oh God. Be glorified, oh God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Well, happy Sunday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome to our Tabernacle of Praise Church International Sunday morning worship experience. Hallelujah. We invite you to lift up the name of Jesus with us today. Amen. We are going to go into our scripture for today. Our scripture will be coming from 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, the 8th through the 23rd verse. That's 2 Kings 6, 8 through 23, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. Amen. And it reads, Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time, time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his offers and demanded of them, tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel? None of us, my lord, the king said one of his officers, but Elisha, the prophet who was in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back. He is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. Elisha told them, this is not the road and this is not the city. Follow me and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. After they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked and there they were inside Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he asked Elisha, shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? Do not kill them, he answered. Would you kill those you have captured with your own sword or bow? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and drink and then go back to their master. 
So he prepared a great feast for them, and after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away, and they returned to their master. So the bands from Aram stopped raiding Israel's territory. Amen. Join us as we, as the praise team worships. Bless the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the day the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Whoa. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 Hallelujah. There is none praise worthy but you, God. Glory. There is none worthy of glory but you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name forever. You are the same. We worship and adore you. Yes, God. We bow ourselves before you, giving you the glory that is to your name sing glory to your name 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 forever you are the same we worship and adore you we bow ourselves we before bow ourselves you. before you giving you the glory giving you the glory that is to you that is to your name say glory glory to your name say glory glory to your name say glory glory to your name forever you forever are you are the same we worship and adore you. We bow ourselves, we bow before ourselves you. before you. We're giving you the glory. Giving you the glory. That is to your that name. That is to your name. Say glory. Glory to your name. Say glory. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Forever you are the same. We worship and adore you. We bow ourselves before you. Yes, giving you the glory that is to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, glory to your name, forever you are the same. We worship and adore you, we bow ourselves before you, giving you the glory, giving you the glory that is to your
going to be praying for a group of people. The people group today are called the uh, Hazaras, which are in the United Arab Emirates, but they are originally from Central Afghanistan. Over the last 200 years, persecution has shaped and defined the Hazaras. More than half were massacred in 1893. They were fiscally attacked and denied political power. It's difficult to evangelize to the hazardous people without running to obstacles from the Muslims. There are no followers of Christ among these people. Our prayer focus this morning is for the Holy Spirit to change this situation, which we know that he can, and that they find safe refuge good jobs, but most of all, for them to have a chance to hear about Jesus so they can become part of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Hallelujah, God. First of all, God, we thank you for stretching your right hand upon us and keeping us all this week long. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. For we know who you are, and we know that you can do all and everything. Right. Lord God, we praying for this group of people, God, that they will have a chance to know who you are. Yes, we know, Lord God, that you could send someone there right. and protect them and spread the word. We know you could plant, even plant a church there. Right. We just pray that they have the opportunity to know who you are as we know who you are. We are free to, to worship you without going into hiding. Yes, we can sit on our front porch and read our Bible and not worry about being shot at. So Lord God, we pray that you would give these people a safe refuge, good jobs, but most of all, that they have the opportunity to find you so that they can be a part of your kingdom. God, we know you can do all and everything. There is nothing impossible for you. So, Lord God, we come together united as one, praying for these people. We know that your will is going to be done. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in the name of Jesus. I pray and I thank you, God. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. This morning, we thank the Lord for this day and thank God for his goodness, greatness, majesty, and his power. Amen. Thank the Lord for this opportunity to be in the house of worship this morning. The Lord is good. And the Lord is greatly to be praised. Amen. We're thankful for those of you who are in the sanctuary and those of you who are joining us online this morning. Amen. We pray that our coming together will definitely uh, glorify God and bless us. Amen. As we bless him. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't have any particular announcements this morning just to greet you today and encourage you in the Lord. Amen. Uh, remember our weekly activities and we encourage people to get involved, get engaged in our weekly activities. We are here at the sanctuary on Wednesday night. If you live in this area and you can make it out on Wednesday night, if you're not a member of this congregation, you're watching us online this morning, you are most welcome. Anytime uh, we're here in worship or study, you're welcome to be a part of what's going on here. Our focus is on impacting people's lives for the kingdom of God because we want God's kingdom advanced in the earth realm. That's why we engage each week in, in uh that's why we engage in missions, and then on Sundays we pray as a congregation corporately 
for a nation or nations or groups in the 1040 window as a part of advancing the kingdom of God. Amen? That is so important, saints, that God's kingdom is advanced. We should want to see other people come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Amen? Amen. And it's each of our individual responsibilities to make sure that we share this gospel message. Amen. Not because we can't just share it on Sunday. We have to share where we are during the week on our jobs and our communities. Amen. With our families, share the gospel message so that others may come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Amen. Saints, it is offering time. Oh, birthdays. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, have prepared. Anybody born in the month of May, please stand. Amen. Let us see you. Amen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And wedding anniversaries in the month of May. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. And many, many, many more. Praise the name of Jesus. All right, saints. It's offering time. Let's prepare to give. If you're watching us online, the information for, for giving is on the screen by now, I'm sure. And if you're in the sanctuary and you didn't bring cash or check with you and you want to give virtually, go to topraise.org, or you should have by now downloaded the Givelify app or uh, the PayPal app and, and give that way. Amen? Amen? Let's support the work of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Tithes and offerings are God's way of supporting his work. And, you know, when you think about it, God is just really, he's, he's, he's a good God. Amen. That is the fairest way because my tithe, if I, my tithe is my tithe and it's the 10% is equal across the board when we look at percentage. Amen. Amen. So God is no respecter of persons. And, and so the, the tithe is 10% of our income. Amen. And we give not out of compulsion, but we give out of our love and obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's lift our tithes and offerings before the Lord. Father, thank you for this opportunity to bring the tithes and the offerings, offerings into your storehouse. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with sources of income. Thank you for your blessings every day of the gift of life, health, and strength. And Lord, this is just a small part of our stewardship. But in obedience to your word and your will, we have brought the tithes and the offerings. The first fruit belongs to you, Father. And we brought it in today to give to you, Father, through this ministry for the advancement of your kingdom. Bless each giver today. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and we thank you. Amen. As you bless the offerings. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let him help me. 
Your change is gonna come. Be strong, my sister. For your work is not done. No. Just keep on believing and hold on tight. He's able to give you joy in the morning light. He's able. Hallelujah. Oh, you're able. He's able. Your change is going to come. Be strong, my sister, for your work is not done. No, just keep on believing and hold on tight. He's able to give you joy. God for his love that he shows every day. Love that he's shown to us on Calvary. And we just want to do a medley of songs that just express our love back to him. Because he first loved us. Because he died on Calvary. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Filled with praise. One more 
more time. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, today. You paid the price for me. You paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary. Way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. And that is why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Let's say that, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Lord, I love. Lord, I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. You're number one, God, and Lord, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you more than anything. More than my mama, more than my daddy, more than my child. Lord, I love, Lord, I love you more than anything. More than my kids. Lord, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you more than Lord, I love you more than anything. Hallelujah. 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 We love you. We love you. I love you more than anything. Give the Lord a wave offering all over. I know some of you got your Bibles in your hands, but just come on. Let's give the Lord a wave offering all over the building. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy of our praise. You're King of kings and you're Lord of lords. You are way out of nowhere. You are bridge over troubled waters. Our shelter in a time of storm. Oh, God, we bless you. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. And we love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. We thank the Lord for this day and for this opportunity to be in the house of worship this morning. When we consider the Lord, who he is, all of his attributes, all that he has done, 
all that he is doing, all that he is, we can't help but worship him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 6. Lifting out of the passage that, that was read earlier, I'm going to read verses 15 through 17 to focus in on our message today. <clears throat> when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army of horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than they, those who are with them. And Elisha, Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses, horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Stop right there. I want to talk about the power of carrying the revelation of Jesus Christ. The power of carrying the revelation of Jesus Christ, of course, inside of you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you, Lord, that when your word goes forth, it does not return to you void, but it accomplishes all that you desire. Thank you that you prosper your word in the things that you sent your word to. Thank you, Lord, for what your word will accomplish in our lives. Thank you for confirmation. Thank you for information. Thank you for enlightenment. Thank you for revelation today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I love this, 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 this passage of Scripture uh, because it shows us the power of God at work. Amen. Through the man of God. Amen. And it is actually a passage of Scripture that deals with God's protection of his people, Israel, uh, against the raiding bands, uh, of, of, against the bands of raiders from, from the uh, of of the Arameans. Uh, today, it's the nation of Syria. Uh, and it shows God's protection of his people. And we've read it, and if you haven't read the whole thing, go back and read it again uh, as the different uh, bands of raiders were coming against the nation of Israel. God would reveal to Elisha where they were, and Elisha would tell the king so that the people would be protected. Amen. And they would not be defeated uh, by, their, by their enemy. Um, but there's something else in this passage that speaks to something that's very important in the life of a Christian and his or her faith walk. Amen. It's about seeing behind what the natural eye sees and beyond what the human brain immediately understands. Amen. I believe the Lord wants us to, 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 to get this. Amen. Elijah's servant, you know the story that Elijah had revealed to the king where this band of raiders were of the Arameans, and, and, and so the king felt like there was someone in his army that was telling um, the king of Israel where they were going to attack Israel. And of course, uh, one of his servants said, oh no, it's not, it's not one of us, <laughs> it's that prophet Elisha. He tells the king of Israel everything you even speak in your bedroom. Now, isn't that amazing, but also powerful? I remember one year being in Malawi and talking to Apostle Chapunda was, a, was talking to us about a former president of, of Malawi that everybody feared. And he said, we were afraid to speak anything negative against him, even in our bedroom, because we, <laughs> we felt like that he would hear uh, everything we said. Of course, you know, he was dealing with witchcraft. This is not dealing with witchcraft. Amen. This is dealing with, with the power of God. Amen. So the king went to Dothan to capture, sent his armies to Dothan to capture Elisha because he felt like if he captured Elisha, that would 
prevent him from informing, um, I think it was Jotham, the king of Israel, what was going on. Well, that morning when Elijah's servant woke up, he went outside and around. when he looked around the city, he saw an army of horses and chariots that had surrounded the city. And he said, his response was, oh, no, my Lord, what shall we do? What shall we do? It was a natural response, amen, uh, uh, to anybody, I believe, when someone is troubled or, or don't see a way out. When, when trouble arises, when something happens and, and you don't see a way out, you say, oh, what am I going to do? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in a desperate situation, a critical situation, or a frightful situation, and you ask, what am I going to do? I know a lot of us have because I've done it myself. Amen. Amen. It's, and, and, and some might be in, in, in a situation like that right now. From a natural perspective, we find ourselves wondering, what are we going to do? And in those situations, all kinds of things can come to your mind. Amen? And, and if you ask someone, if you ask a friend, if you ask a, uh, maybe even your spouse, amen, uh, especially if that person is immature, amen, in the Lord, uh, they, 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 they might give you all kinds of ideas about what you should do in your situation. However, there are times we need more than ideas. Are you hearing me? I've had people get upset with me because they said they brought an idea to me and I didn't accept it. Well, there are times we need more than ideas. Amen. We need more than Thank God for ideas. But we have to see the difference between ideas and revelation of God. Elisha had an answer to his servant's question, and it wasn't an idea. It was a revelation from God. Elisha answered the young man, said to the young man, don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Amen. Y'all got quiet on me. I want to hear something. Amen. Elijah had this revelation because of his relationship with God. He could speak calmly and confidently because he had been in relationship with God for so long. He had seen God at work in his life, and of course, he was a prophet of God. He had heard the voice of God, and he knew that God was with them at that very moment. Amen. I, I, was, reading, I was reading this devotional uh, one day last week, and in the, devo in the devotional, uh, the author wrote, and I put it on Facebook, and I saw, you know, sometimes you put things up, not that you look for comments, but you do look for comments, you know. Sometimes you put comments out there, and a lot of people respond. And I said, hmm, I put this comment out there. Our quietness and confidence are a product of the revelation we carry inside, not the situations we find ourselves in. And I left it at that because I wanted people to think about that. Because there are times that people are just worried, they're flustered, they don't know what to do, they're all up in arms, you know, and they can't, you know, they, 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 all kind of stuff is happening. But then there are other people who face difficult situations and they're calm, they're quiet, they're confident. And it's because of the revelation that they carry inside. And when I read that, it resonated with me so much because in my life even, I know that times I may get upset about a, a situation, but my, my, my upsetness doesn't last too long, you know, because I've learned, I've learned that God is in control. God is sovereign. Amen? Amen. Amen. What I don't see, God sees. What I don't know, God knows. Amen? Amen. I have the revelation that God is in control of every situation and every circumstance. You remember years ago we did a study 
about the about God, and I can't remember the ex exact name of it, but one thing that stuck with me from that study is that when God allows something to happen in our lives, he does it for his glory and for our good. Amen. Now, sometimes our good doesn't feel so good to us at the moment. Doesn't feel so good to us at the moment. Amen. Because we're looking for something else, but God may be allowing us to go through something for what's going to happen later on down the road. Yeah, yeah. And worrying doesn't change anything. Doesn't change the situation. Really, worrying makes it worse for you. Yeah, yeah. So like Elisha to his servant, I have to tell myself, and I told myself this over and over again. How many of you speak to yourself sometimes? <laughs> Amen. You got to speak to yourself. You got to tell, tell your mind, close down. You got to tell your mouth, shut up. Amen. All those thoughts that's running through your mind, you got to say, stop it. This is the end of it. You got to speak to yourself. Amen. I tell myself, don't be afraid. Those that are with us are more than those that are with them. But Elisha's answer didn't stop right there. Amen. Elijah knew, Elisha knew that his, pers that his personal revelation of God was not enough for this young servant to base his faith on. Now, now this is not Gehazi. Gehazi was that servant that, 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 that took the, that, that, that kept the, uh, the money, took the money from the, the, the king that went to Jordan to, to, uh, uh, to, to be cleansed of his leprosy. It's not Gehazi. This is a new servant that, that's following Elisha. And he's young. You know, he doesn't, he hadn't had the opportunity to experience the power of God, the person of God, the revelation of God for himself. Amen? So, you know, when I look at this, I realize that there comes a time when mama and daddy's faith is not sufficient for us. Amen? You need faith in God for yourself. Amen? It is not enough for me to have faith in God because I can't have faith for you. Amen? Your husband cannot have faith for you. Your wife cannot have faith for you. You must have faith in God for yourself. Amen? To face the challenges of life, to face the challenges of ministry, to face the challenges of the attacks of the enemy that will come against you, you need your own faith in God. Elisha knew that his personal revelation was not sufficient for his servant to have faith in God. So Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Amen. Amen. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked, amen, and saw the hill, saw in the hills around him full of horses, and you see the difference in the text, chariots of fire. When he saw the first time, he saw the Aramean army, and he saw horses and chariots. But this time, he saw horses and chariots of fire. And of course, chariots of fire, amen, who is a consuming fire? Amen, refers to our God, amen. That day, that young man got a revelation of God and how God fights and protects his servants for himself. It was a personal revelation that the man received. A personal revelation that the man received. Amen. Well, that's a picture of what revelation is. Of course, when you look at the, the written definition of revelation, uh, in the Eastern Bible Dictionary, revelation is an uncovering, a bringing to light of that which has been previously wholly hidden or only obscurely seen. Revelation. Amen. So sometimes it's not that people don't know God. They just don't have a full revelation of God. All right. Okay, I'm going to take that a little bit further in just a moment. Amen. And this is, this is what's happening here. God uncovered the horses and chariots of fire that had surrounded, that he had surrounded Dothan with. God uncovered to this servant his presence 
with him in Elisha. Amen. There are many instances of revelation in Scripture. Now, there's one that most of us in here know about, and we've heard it over and over again. We're very familiar with it. You remember the day that Jesus said, when Jesus was talking about his church, and he asked his disciples, who do men say that, 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 that the Son of Man is? There's all, oh, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're uh, Jeremiah or something, John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But then Jesus said, well, who do you say? Who do you say that I am? And, so, and Peter answered, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And what was Jesus' reply? Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Amen. No human being revealed this to you, Peter, but my Father in heaven has revealed to you who I am. Revelation made the difference between for those disciples. It was important. It was important for them to have revelation. They needed to know more than the Jesus who other people talked about. They need to know who Jesus was for themselves. Amen? We need to know more than the Jesus that we sing about in songs because anybody can learn a song. We need to know more than the Jesus that our parents talked about or that the preacher talks about. We need to know Jesus Christ. We need a revelation of Jesus Christ for ourselves. And this revelation is important for us to carry every day of our lives. Every day of our lives. You carry the revelation not just in your head, but in your being. The revelation of Jesus the revelation of Jesus. Carrying this revelation for those disciples was going to make all of the difference in the world for them. They didn't know what they were going to face, but carrying the revelation of Jesus inside of them was going to make all of the difference in the world for them in their faith and their victory in life. Revelation. Earlier this week, Earlier this week, and, and, you know, I'm always thinking about something. Amen. I hope you are too. This is not a judgmental statement, but listen to me. Earlier this week, actually it was, it was I think it was last Sunday. I think it was last Sunday. I was just thinking about people. I was thinking about church members. So that means I was thinking about us. But not, not necessarily anybody in here in particular, all right, was thinking about church because I heard a sermon and I knew the intent of the sermon and by no means did God call me to judge anybody's preaching, all right. So that's not what I was doing. But I was, I was listening, and, 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 and then I started thinking about people. And the question came to my mind. Are y'all listening? What's the difference in me and anybody in the congregation? What's the difference between the ministers who are licensed and ordained, and people who say that they're just regular church members. What's the difference? What's the difference? I'm not talking about a license. I'm not talking about a piece of paper. And I begin to think about the church and down through the years and looking at the church and, 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 and looking at people who, who, who study the Scriptures. Why is it that some people study the Scriptures, search the Scriptures for more and more truth, while others just come to church and are not serious students of the Word of God. What's the difference? 
what's the difference between someone who, who, who demonstrates from their life that they are a committed follower of Jesus Christ and just someone who says that they are a Christian? What's the difference? It goes back to Revelation. Why am I hungry for the word of the Lord? Because of Revelation. I'm going a little bit further with this. I'm going a little bit further with this. Because people say, I know Jesus. A lot of people carry a few facts about Jesus. They know the basics. They, they know he's God's son. He died on the cross for our sins. God raised him from the dead. They know those statements. They've heard it over and over and over again. And, and that's a bit of revelation, but it could just be head knowledge. They know the facts, but, but are they carrying a personal revelation of Jesus Christ? I mean, every day. I mean, in your being. I mean, uh, uh, in their being. Are they carrying? Just so you don't think I'm talking about you. So they, are they carrying a, a personal revelation of Jesus? Facts are just facts in your head. But the facts need to move from facts to a personal revelation. If a person never moves from the basic facts about Christ, to a personal revelation about Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the one who is Emmanuel, God with us, God with me, the, 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 the sovereign God, the, the almighty God, the, the one who fights for me, the, the one who makes ways for me, hallelujah, the, the, the one who is with me every day of my life, the one the one who is with me when I lay in my bed at night, glory to God. The one who's with me when I get in my car. I don't know what's out there. I don't know what I'm going to face when I get on the highway, but I know who's with me. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, you can carry the facts, and you can say, yes, Jesus is the Son of God, but, but he is, is he your personal Savior? Yeah. There's a great, there, there is great benefit in carrying the revelation of Jesus Christ with you. Can somebody say, with me? Revelation in your being keeps on speaking. Hallelujah. Revelation is not stagnant, glory to the, to the name of Jesus. Revelation inside of you keeps on speaking. It, it does not keep quiet. Hallelujah. When you're sleeping, the revelation of Jesus is speaking to you in dreams. Are you understanding me? There have been so many times, amen, I've been in my sleep. When I wake up, amen, I realize I've been in the presence of the Lord during the night. When I didn't realize in my conscious mind I was asleep, but in my subconscious mind I was in the presence of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Revelation, revelation. It keeps on speaking. When, when you're walking along the way, the revelation of Jesus is speaking through visions and inspiration. Sometimes I'm riding along the highway, and I may see a billboard, hallelujah, and it reminds me of Jesus. It gives me a message about Jesus. It lets me know God is with me. You see, some people, some people are waiting for an audible voice from God rather than waiting for the inspiration and the revelation of God that comes from the inside. When you carry the revelation of Jesus on the inside of you, amen, you don't have to worry about the things of life that are around you because the revelation says don't be anxious. Revelation says, be anxious for nothing. Hallelujah. But in everything with prayer and supplication, amen, let your request be made known unto the Lord. The revelation said, if God can take care of the birds of the air, amen, and the flowers and the lilies of the field, you are much more valuable than them. How much more will he not take care of you? Amen. When the revelation is inside of you, you don't have to go and pick up the Bible, amen, and try to find and search the Scripture to encourage yourself because the revelation is inside of you. Amen. When sickness racks your body, bless 
bless the name of Jesus. You know God's got you. Amen. You know that he took your sicknesses and he took your diseases to the cross. Amen. With his stripes, we've been healed. The revelation is inside of you. When the revelation is inside of you, you may feel lonely sometimes. Amen. But after a while, amen, you know you've got a friend. Hallelujah, six closer than a brother. You know you've got someone who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's the revelation of Jesus, I tell you. Amen. When I've got the revelation of Jesus, I don't have to sing, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Amen. Because he already promised me that he would not leave me. I've got the revelation. It's on the inside of me. Amen. I know that he's with me always, even until the end of the age. Yes, not only is he with me, but he's inside of me. Hallelujah. When you've got the revelation, when you carry the revelation of Jesus Defeat of the, by the enemy is not your concern because a revelation says, amen, he canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, amen, which stood against us, condemning us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross, and he disarmed principalities and powers and made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, oh, triumphing over them by the cross, the revelation. That's inside of you. Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord has already defeated the enemy. He's already triumphed over them. Victory is already ours. Ah, yeah, we sing it, victory is mine. We know, we know the words. We know the words. Amen, but we got to have the revelation. Amen, in the situation, you need the revelation to speak. In your time of trouble, you need the revelation to speak. Hallelujah. When you carry the revelation on the inside of you, the revelation of Jesus Christ, because that revelation is alive, every time you get a chance, you talk about Jesus. Now, there's a whole lot of things we talk about, but when the revelation is alive on the inside of you, that revelation on the inside of you is like fire shut up in your bones. Somehow or another, the conversation has to go to Jesus. Amen. Peter and John, amen, you know it. They went to the gate of the temple, amen, at the hour of prayer. Bless the name of Jesus. There was a man begging for money. They said, we don't have money, but we got a revelation. Hallelujah. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? Silver and gold we don't have, but what we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. When the church was persecuted, even though they were being killed, they didn't stop preaching about Jesus because they had the revelation of Jesus Christ inside of them. Back up a little bit on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, when the, when, 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 when the Holy Spirit fell, when the Holy Spirit came, amen, and baptized the believers, amen, they began to speak with other tongues, amen, and then they went outside and began to prophesy. And people said, oh, these people are drunk. Peter had the revelation. Peter stood up and said, oh, no, 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 no. These are not drunk, as you suppose, but, but this is that which is spoken of by Joel, the prophet. Amen. Amen. In the latter days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Amen. Your young men shall dream dreams. Your old men shall, dream, shall have vision. Yeah. You can face your future with confidence because you have the revelation of Jesus Christ inside of you. Paul said, I know in whom I believed. Yeah, yeah. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. Yeah. Yeah, in that day, it's going to be well in the national teeth. But who in here is afraid? I'm not afraid because I've got a revelation. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Lord. I'm already protected. I'm preserved. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I've got the first fruit of eternal life. Amen. Already. Right now. Right here. Right now. Come on. Hallelujah. 
Do you know what I'm talking about this morning? Y'all got an idea? This is not just head knowledge. It's not just head knowledge. You don't get the full revelation from reading the book. You can read the book. Jesus took the words from the pages of the book, and he has revealed these words to us, and they're real to us. It's no longer who people say Jesus is. It's who you say, I say, and know Jesus is. Now, because I got a revelation, I can sing, there is a bomb in Gilead who heals a sin-sick soul. And I know I'm not talking about a lotion, nor am I talking about a cream. I'm singing about Jesus Christ, who was wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities, and the chastisement for my peace was upon him, and with his stripes I'm healed. Now I can sing about my rock, my sword, my shield, and I'm not talking about a physical rock. I'm talking about the foundation of my life. I'm talking about Jesus the Christ because I got a revelation of Jesus. I got a revelation. All of us were little at one time. We go to church and we hear old people singing songs. We say, what in the world are they talking about? But now you got the revelation. Now you know for yourself because you got the revelation. Well, let me leave you with this. How do you move from the basic facts, the little you know about the revelation of Jesus, the little you know to the revelation of Jesus Christ? And some, most of us in here know it, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Well, God gives revelation about himself. Elisha did not open his servant's eyes. Elisha did not give that servant revelation. God gave revelation. Elisha asked God to open his servant's eyes to give him revelation that he was with them. Amen. God did just that. If you want your children to grow in the Lord, ask God to begin to give them revelation. When situations come up, you see, we've got to move. You know, yeah, one of the things that happens, yeah, anyway, yeah, in the body of Christ is a lot of times we lose we lose our children along the way. Some of us, not all of us. And sometimes this faith is not passed from generation to generation. And part of it has to be because there's a lack of revelation that children are getting about their faith. Now, of course, temptation is going to come. But we got to keep on. And even when we see them straying, we got to keep on speaking. We got to keep on praying that God will open their eyes that God will give them revelation so that they will know him personally. We can't give up on our children, amen, not if we really believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Messiah, and we have to answer them. We can't give up. We can't accept the fact that we're losing a whole generation. We can't accept the fact that we've lost a generation of black men in the church. We cannot accept that. We got to go back to God and ask God to give revelation and to use us to speak his word. And as we speak his word, that he will open up the eyes because he's the one that gives revelation. Let me tell you this. I'm, I'm finished. Because God wants to reveal himself to us. Yeah, God does. God wants us to know him. God does not want us just to know about him. God wants us to know him. Whenever you see in the Bible revelation, God takes the initiative. God takes the initiative. Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, 6 starts out by saying, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Then it says, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. There are four things in that verse that I want to just pick up on real quick, and I'll be done. And I pray that more people are listening than hearing the sanctuary this morning. Amen. Number one, you must come to God. He who comes to God, because as I said, I don't give revelation. I point you to Jesus. 
God gives revelation. I give you information. God gives revelation. We give our children information. That's why you can't stop. And when I say talking to your children, I'm not talking about fussing. You know, some, some, of, some people like to fuss, especially if you got, you know, you're already in conflict with your children. You know, you got to back off the conflict and just don't fuss because, you know, you don't catch flies with salt. <laughs> you just don't. You can't be salty. <laughs> you got to be sweet. Amen. Amen. We give information. God gives revelation. I remember reading in the book of, 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 of Philippians as Paul was talking about being, being perfect, being mature, and, and you know, uh, talking about uh, attaining to the, uh, to the fullness of Christ. And he said, let as many of us as be perfect, be mature, have this mind. And if any of you are otherwise minded, God will reveal even this to you. Now, you probably heard me quote that scripture a thousand times. Why? Because I learned that there are times when, when I was younger in the Lord, and sometimes even now, you know, I hear things that just don't sound right. You know, I hear things that initially I may not agree with, but I've learned that if I have an otherwise, another mind about the thing, and it is truth, and I keep seeking God, God will reveal his truth to me. And I say that over and over again because I know I preach some things that some of y'all disagree with. And I just pray that you just keep on believing and keep on waiting on God and seeking God so that he can give you the revelation. I mean, if I'm not telling the truth, that's fine. Well, it ain't fine, but God will reveal it to me too. But if I'm telling the truth and you disagree, you need the revelation. Amen. You need the revelation. God gives revelation. Number two, believe that God exists. He who comes to God must believe that he exists. So if, if I want revelation about God, I got to come to him. Amen. Now, 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 my coming to God may be through a vessel. God may, I may ask a question to, of someone. But ultimately, I want to answer from God because remember, the person can only give information. You got to go back. You got to pray. You got to see God. But you got to believe that God exists. God can't be someone that you only talk about. He can't be simply a figment of your imagination. He can't be someone that you pray to, but you don't really know that he's real. Anybody ever been there? God must be real to you. Once and for all, you can't be up and down about it. I believe God. I don't know if God exists. No, no. Once and for all, God exists. Amen? He has to be real to you. You can't be wavering about whether God exists or not. You must be convinced beyond a shadow of doubt that he is real and that he exists. He must be as real to you as that chair that you're sitting on. Amen. He must be as real to you as your mother, your father, your spouse, your sister, your brother. God must be real to you. Amen. God exists whether you experience, have experienced him or not. He is real, and you must believe that. And keep on believing it until you begin to experience him. Amen. It's cold in here. Thank God you're alive. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Tell someone, not the person sitting next to you, but get this message and take it to somebody who's doubting God. Keep on believing. Amen. Until you start experiencing him for yourself. You all, you all remember, you know, yes, I'm old. Thank God I'm old. Amen. So a lot of songs I know are old songs. I ain't going to say that. I'm not talking about that song today. Amen. You remember Shirley Caesar talking about how they used to play church. And they'd be outside playing and shouting and, and, and I guess the mom would get mad at them and tell them, stop playing church. And sisters ran inside that day and said, mama, Shirley playing church again. She said, baby, 
Charlie ain't playing this time. It's real. When I was a little boy, I would play church. Are you hearing me? Let my sister tell you. We'd go behind the house, and I would preach, and we would sing, and I would just start jumping and shouting. Hey, amen. But the day came when it was not playing anymore. Amen. Amen. Jesus is real to me. Hallelujah. Is he real to you? Amen. You got to keep believing. Amen. Until he becomes real to you. Then believe. Believe that he rewards those. Number three, believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Amen? Believe. He that comes, you got to come to God. You must believe that he exists and believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Amen. Get this now. Because your proof that God is real it's not that he gives you a new car. Your proof that God is real is not that he gives you that man you've been praying about or that woman you've been praying about. Your proof that God is real is not that he gives you a new job. Your proof that God is real is that he reveals himself to you. He is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Hey, people are seeking the wrong thing. You're seeking a thing. You're seeking more of a thing. Amen. And you want God to show you that he's real by giving you those things. But God says, no, 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 no. I want to give you me. I want you to know me. Because when you know me, you got everything else you need. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. And what? And what? All what? All these things shall be added to you. Put God first. Seek God first. Get to know God first. Amen. In God, there's a new car. In God, there's a husband. In God, there's a wife. In God, there's a job. In God, there's a future. In God, there's a career. Am I talking to anybody today? Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, Verse 1, he says, I am your exceeding great reward. The reward you need today that he gives is himself. Lastly, number four, you must diligently seek him. He who comes to God, got to come to God, must believe that he exists, must believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him. And number four is to diligently seek in him, Paul. Diligence shows desire. Diligence shows desire. Diligence shows desire. How do you become excellent at anything? How do you become excellent at anything? You got to work at it. You got to go for it. You got to put your all into it. Think about it. You get, you get rewards on your job. You get honored on your job for the excellent work that you're doing on your job. But how did you get the reward? They don't just pick anybody. And you don't get the reward by coming in late every day. You don't get the reward by being sloppy in what you do. You don't get the reward by creating confusion on your job. You get the reward because you're passionate about what you're doing and you put forth your very best effort. God rewards those who diligently seek him. God gives self-revelation of those who diligently seek him because they, that diligence shows that they have a desire for him. They have a desire. I want God. I want God. I want God. More than I want my meal. I want God. More than I want a new car. I want God. Are you hearing me? 
when you want to know God like nothing else? Fast and pray. Search the scriptures. Walk with him. Pray some more. Fast some more. Seek him some more until God rewards you for that self-revelation. You remember in the book Chasing After God? And we, we, we say, I'm chasing after you. But in that book, Chasing After God, somewhere in that book, the one, one of the things that I remember from that book is he talks about how when you're chasing after God, and God sees you chasing after him. He stops and turns around and embraces you because you never will catch God. God is always beyond you, except he catches you. But you got to be chasing after him. You got to be chasing after him. And too many people in the church are not chasing after God. He reveals himself to those who diligently seek him. Who diligently seek him. And when you diligently seek him and he reveals himself to you, change starts coming in your life. Solutions begin to come in your life. Solutions begin to come in your life. Because you got the revelation. And you carry in the revelations of Jesus Christ. Answers to questions. Just like that young servant. He was at the right place with the right person. When that happened. And he asked the right question. What shall we do? And he got the answer. He got the revelation. Saints. I may be preaching to the choir today, but if you needed this message, then God sure gave it to you. Oh, that we would see a church that's on fire for God. See, we don't need a hundred people to be on fire for God. This group right in here, would be, if we were on fire for God, next week, the numbers would double. We were on fire for God. We'd be making impact everywhere we go. Oh, Jesus. Yes, we got our own situations and our own circumstances to deal with, but it's the revelation that we carry that speaks to our situations and our circumstances. And so when we come and we pray for those nations that don't even have the opportunity to hear the gospel message, our hearts should be broken because we can listen to the gospel 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we have opportunities to tell people about this Jesus that we know. When the revelation speaks, and he will speak, the focus can come off of you and go on that person who doesn't know Jesus as Savior and Lord. It's the power of carrying the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, we, many of us carry the revelation, and many of us are doing the work of ministry, but more of us need to. More of us need to. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Allow the revelation of Jesus that's inside of you to speak to you. Watch your worries and cares start going away. Now you're focusing on Jesus and what he's called you to do. To be a husband, to be a father, to be a mother, to be a sister, to be a brother, yes. But there are so many people who don't know Jesus that has to be priority in our lives. And we carry the revelation of Jesus so that we are free to share Jesus. Even though we may be going through stuff in our own lives, there's freedom that we have to share Christ with other people. I want to pray for us today. Lift up our hand. Lift up your hands. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you, Lord, that when your word goes forth, it does not return to you void, but it accomplishes all that you desire. I thank you, Father, that you prosper your word and the things that you sent your word to. Lord, thank you for the revelation of Jesus Christ. As you open our eyes to see you, to know you, to know that you're in control, to know that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that arises against us in judgment, we shall condemn. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that as you speak in us, Give us peace that passes all understanding. You free us to share the gospel message to those that don't know you because we're not so much concerned about ourselves. You promise to supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You told us to cast all of our care on you, Lord, so we don't really have to be so concerned about ourselves and what we want. There are too many people that don't know you that we're in contact with every day of our lives. Help us, Lord. As we carry this revelation, to share this revelation, to share the information, and teach people how to seek you for, for the revelation. For every situation and every adverse circumstance and adverse situation that people are going through today, I pray that you've already spoken to them. You're in control. You will work these things out for your glory and for our good. We cast our care on you now. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you for that person who does not know you, that person who may be listening to us online today. I pray that, they will, that they've heard the message that they will come to you that they will believe that you exist that you re will reward them of, a, of your self disclosure your self revelation so that they may know you as they diligently seek you thank you now it's in Jesus' name that we pray amen so if there's anybody this morning, if you're watching us online and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord and you'd like to give your life to Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity. Today, now, right now. And if you accept Christ as your Savior and your Lord, the information is posted on the, on the screen where you can write to us and give us that information, give us your information so that we can follow up with you. Jesus Christ gave his life for your sins, for my sins. He sacrificed his life to satisfy God's righteous requirement. The Lord God says the soul that sins shall surely die. God could not violate that right, that law. But Jesus Christ, God's self-revelation, died in your place, died in my place satisfied the righteous requirement of God's law so that you could be saved. This has nothing to do with denomination. 
It has nothing to do with the color of a person's skin. It has everything to do with the fact that God loves you and God wants you to be in a relationship with him. God wants you saved. That's the relationship. It doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect even because none of us are perfect. But in Christ Jesus, we learn to strive to be like him. So if you're watching me today, you want to give your life to Jesus. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. But Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you satisfied God's law on my behalf so that I could be saved. Lord Jesus, I accept your sacrifice. I accept what you did for me. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Save me from my sin. I submit to you. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. And Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. Amen. If that was the decision of your will, the Lord heard you, the Lord answered your prayer, and you're saved today. Don't worry about whether you feel like you're saved. Salvation has nothing to do with feeling. Salvation has everything to do with your faith in the finished work of Christ on Calvary. Write to us. Give us your information so that we can follow up with you. Amen. At this time, we're going to move right into Holy Communion. Bless the name of Jesus. I pray that the word of the Lord has helped you, blessed you in some way today. And I pray that you will desire not just to be a church member, but to be one who carries the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ inside of you. Hallelujah. On that night that Jesus was crucified, he and his, before he was crucified, he and his disciples were in the upper room. And after they had eaten, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he gave it to them and said, take, eat all of it. For this is a symbol of my body which is given for you. As often as you do it, you do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it to them and said, take, drink all of it. This is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do this, you do proclaim my death and my suffering until I come again. He's coming again, saints. As we reflectively prepare our hearts and our minds to partake today, I pray that this is an act of faith on all of our part in obedience to the Lord's will. Let's listen to the and join in with our music ministry as they minister to us before we partake today. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never lose its power the blood that she
So, Father, thank you for the blood that you shed on Calvary for the remission of our sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us so much that you will give your life. Shed your blood so that God's law would be satisfied and the way made for us to be saved. As we come to your table today, we reflect on your crucifixion, your body hanging on that cross, your blood being shed, you dying on that cross so that we could live. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your great love for us. Thank you for all of the implications of the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary that day. And that blood that never loses its power, the blood of Jesus that reaches to the highest mountains, flows to the lowest valley, Thank you, Lord, for the revelation of that blood and the revelation of Christ. Now, Lord, as we approach and come to your table and partake of Holy Communion, please forgive us of our sins and our iniquities. Any and everything that's not of you and not like you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As we ask, because we know that it's already done. You said if we confess our sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Yes, Lord. Thank you that where we stand today, as your children who are committed to you, our sins have been forgiven. Sins have been taken away. You've washed us whiter than snow. Bless these elements of Holy Communion that we are about to partake. And as we receive them, I pray for the spiritual significance of the, of the bread and the wine yes, and the juice to be imparted in us that as we go forth from the sanctuary, we carry the revelation and we speak the revelation everywhere we go. We compel men and women to come unto you that they might be saved. Bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. Take the bread, eat all of it. As often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. Take the cup. Drink all of it. As often as you do it, you do proclaim my death and my suffering until I come again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When they had eaten, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. We can't go there, but we can go into the hedges and highways and compel men and women to come unto the Lord that they might be saved. Let's stand. Oh, it was the blood for me. 
from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. To the all-wise God, our heavenly Father, we will power and glory, honor and dominion forever and ever. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. 